Hello everyone, Master Xeon 1001 here, and as an introduction to the video at hand, I wanted to at least show the process of how I got to that point of actually creating the object, just in case anyone was curious. So the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is just jump on the computer and just start testing the tools to make sure that they're working with the latest version of Blender. Um, so often have I woken up and things have been broken or needed to be, you know, checked into or emergency patches had to have been done in order to ensure continued compatibility, which is a major deal, but I do like to be on top of such things. And typically with these files, I don't save them. In fact, in some of the videos where I've been, you know, just cutting up boxes, you may have heard me say, you know, I'm not going to save this file because it doesn't matter because, you know, even in the files that I prepare for, in advance, I save all those attempts. So, you know, even the stuff I do in tutorials, I have like, you know, tons of examples of me working my way up to it, practicing the techniques. But, you know, there came a time where I began to just not even want to save files anymore because I would have to press Control S and then I would have to pick a location and then I would have to type in a file name and I would have to think about a file name. And in the end, I just started to just come up with pretty generic names for things. I'd just be like Qbox, Jbox, Xbox, Xbox One, you know, maybe not Xbox as, you know, copyright symbol there. But, um, you know, with these little random tool tests, I would just, you know, save them out. And Power Save was born about as a way to kind of turn Blender into a sketchbook because, you know, while I recommend everybody jump in and, you know, work a cube, like a Mike Tyson on a trip to Box City to really get their bearings with the tool because it's a really quick way to learn it in a controlled environment. Saving is also important. You know, you may want to play with layer. You might want to throw it in another scene as a, as a prop or something. And I see a lot of people posting some very nice boxes. So before I jumped in to the topic of talking about power save and how I use it uh, compared to how the tool's actually made, I wanted to at least show how I made the part that I'm going to be talking about and playing with. So I hope you guys at least enjoyed this um, introduction, just kind of just showing me just playing with the tools. Um, right now I'm actually using a version that is um, not congruent with the one that's out. However, more than likely by the time you see this video, the version in question will have the same features as what I'm showing, if not improved or done proper. But I just wanted to just get a quick recording to just kind of set the stage for this, just in case you guys wanted to see me work a box for the 50th time. When it comes to saving, I'm no stranger to pressing Control S to bring up the save dialog window. And from there, choosing your save location and, you know, putting in your file name and then saving the file. However, PowerSave aims to somewhat simplify that process. So when it comes to my personal usage of PowerSave, it definitely differs from the way it was intended. So if I go under the preferences and we look at the preferences for this add-on, we see that I have it saving to my Dropbox so I can grab it on other computers, but I have all the autosave preferences turned off because I don't need any assistance with autosaving. Autosave in Blender works just fine for my needs. However, I did auto override the date time format to name every file that I save automatically as QBox just to simplify it from being just some date time format, which is a little ambiguous for my taste. 
but with that we can just close the preferences and if we bring down the power save drop down we also see a useful option here for toggle auto pack that's added to the newest version of power save if we turn that on we can see that these files have been packed in and what i mean by files packed in there's two decals down here from the mr rad collection and so if we go under here and we click on power save you'll notice that next to the power save icon is parentheses hops which means that this power save icon is also powered by hops meaning that the moment i click it it's going to also show an on-screen dialog window that will just kind of give us a little additional information and notice that i also did not type in a file name because i want to just automatically use the file name that it gives me and just save this as qbox and we see that this is qbox number 202 and while this is showing on screen for a second it doesn't mean that it's actually taking that long to save it's actually showing on screen so long because under my opt-ins under operator text i have my operator display time at 10 seconds but the beauty of power save is that if you are saving your files using the same name over and over like you see here i'm on 202 that means that there's 201 other files so if we were to go under this and we click the back arrow we can just go back through previous iterations this one was a previous version of saving it where i didn't notice that my audio wasn't recording so we click back again and we see that this one's definitely not a cue box so we go back again and we're just looking at just another iteration of cue box from our previous session and we're just scrolling through just looking at just different cue boxes so this one's just number 197 this one was like a floor that i ended up using later just scrolling through just different cue boxes over the course of time this one was a favorite as well just kind of had this really um destitute blade runner yellow look to me so continuing on looking through these boxes just scrolling through them and this is nothing this is just my cue box line there's a whole nother line of these called the twist line where i just save out twist tests that i do just kind of testing out the tools to make sure everything's working right so we're just still continuing on just scrolling through these boxes letting them present themselves just showing the power of power save and then of course if i need to just access all the files all together i can just click on open project folder and it'll open the project folder in a windows explorer explorer window so that you can view it and go through and clean these files manually of course to also show a little bit else of how i use power save we'll go to just solenoid and we'll just pop open solenoid number 25 and we'll just scrub through the timeline on this one and we're just looking at just random solenoids i've made and we'll just scrub back through just looking at previous iterations anytime i see it not materialized and set up with lights i'm like why uh, I might actually do a video where I go back through and set up all these to just be fully presentable because it's something that I've been working on streamlining lately. But these are just solenoid tests that we're just scrolling through and just looking at. Just to show that I'm also, you know, doing things in addition to boxes. This one was a uh, really fun one. Continuing on our tour, we'll turn off viewport overlays. That one might look familiar. And just jumping through, looking at solenoids. So a lot of these were just kind of practice runs to get me warmed up for ideas to do in future tutorials, just talking about solenoids. In fact, for this one, I actually have a collection instance of the whole first one that's this piece just on the inside at the back so we'll be talking more on that later just scrolling through our solenoid collection just looking at what kind of solenoids i make whenever i'm just jumping in and out of solenoid testing workflows you know the ones that stop really abruptly are the ones where i just had some sort of idea that resulted in me just 
needing to go and probably work on something. In fact, when I'm hitting redundant ones, it makes me feel like I need to double check, but maybe I was uh, going forward incorrectly. Or maybe I went all the way through. That might be the end of our tour. So I thank you all for watching this video on how I use Power Save. I just wanted to have a video out there just showing just some of the basics of Power Save and how I use it and how Power Save connects with hops and allows you to just kind of quickly get through saving files if you're the type of person that just doesn't even want to save but may want your files for later.